is so faithful. And so, of course, I will be talking about nuts and bolts for singles. And of course, it's very important for us to talk about this. Um, what is nuts and bolts? Let me just go quickly into it. Let me go quickly into it. When we talk about nuts and bolts, we're talking about the essence. We're talking about the fundamental. We're talking about the 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 what the, the what the robber that really needs a role when it comes to the Christian or rather the single life, particularly. Amen. And you know, when you look at the word not, it obviously refers to you see around, you know, it's like a round, you know, thing, and it's used for buildings or used for certain constructions in the mechanical implement or tool that is used to fasten things and keep things in place. Glory be to God. And of course, NUT obviously refers to the lady. And of course, the B-O-L-T, which is the boat, refers to the man. Hallelujah. Because when you look at the way they look, it looks, you know, physiologically like the man's own, what have you, and then the lady's not. Zero. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm not trying to go too deep, so we don't say, ah, pastor, where are you going with this? Glory be to God. But what's a knot? A knot is a type of fastener that has a threaded hole in the middle. And they are used with bows to secure the object. A knot is a type of fastener. I'm sure that's on the screen. It's a type of fastener that has a threaded hole in the middle. And they are used with bows to secure an object. Now, I'm going, we are going somewhere with this because, you know, it's going to help you greatly. Amen. Now, what we, I tried to do was, you know, make do an acronym and um, with N-U-T-S at, at the same time with B-O-L-T-S, which obviously is for the ladies and the N-U-T-S for the, I mean, sorry, the N-U-T-S for the ladies and the B-O-L-T-S is for the men, of course. So now we start with the letter N, which is for the ladies, this la the single ladies, amen. And that N means what? The first one I have there is the word nurturer. Praise the Lord, nurturer. You are going too fast. Media, you are jumping so fast. <laughs> now, every female gender, if you if you recognize or you pay attention to your growing up years with your sister or any female individual you have around you, something always happens to the female gender. And that is a fact that every time they're going to buy them a particular toy, I wonder why they don't buy them a gun. They always buy the female a what? A baby doll. I mean, I mean, for those of us that actually were growing up, we actually got either a baby doll, or if we didn't have a grown up, if we were growing up in a particular side of the world that was not so privileged, you probably had a lot of um, um, play kind of pens that you do, whereby you play with things, you try to plate hair. So in other words, from a growing up life, a young girl is kind of groomed to be a nurturer. There's that thing in them to want to nurture. There's that thing they want to actually, you know, play somebody's hair. Back a baby doll. How many ladies did that when you were growing up? You backed a baby doll. Some people didn't do that. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> but most ladies, I've come to realize, they do that a lot. So there's, there's this thing of wanting to actually nurture someone. You know, take care of someone. And you know, there's always this kind of game we always play. Daddy and mommy game. I mean, we play that game. <laughs> daddy and mommy game. You know, someone is always playing the daddy and someone is playing the mommy. There's always that thing of wanting to be. So, a woman or a young girl is always nurtured from her growing up years to want to be a, you know, kind of mom. A mother. So, there's always that thing there. It's kind of physiological. God has, you know, put that instinct in that young girl to always want to be a nurturer. You want to take care of something. Even though you didn't have this kind of upbringing, there is always something locked in a female child that always wants to take care of something. And that's what God wants you to be. God wants you to be a nurturer. Not only that, because you will nurture people around you. You will nurture yourself. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Because before you get to a place where you actually can be married, because I'm teaching you what you need to have before you actually find that one that you will marry. 
Because a lot of times people go into marriage to want something. Because marriage is more like a prayer point to solve a need for some people. Particularly for some girls. They might not be here. But some they want to solve a need. And let me let you know something. Marriage really doesn't solve any kind of need. It doesn't solve. In fact, it magnifies problems that are already existed. And so it's very important for us to understand that you see, God wants us to be nurturers. I'm starting with the ladies first. So if you look at Titus 2, 3 to 5. Can you help me with that scripture? Titus 2, 3 to 5. Titus 2, 3 to 5. You can open your Bibles there quickly. Titus chapter 2, verse 3 to 5. Hallelujah. If somebody is there, you can actually just, you know, read it out. Amen. If you're not there, shout, oh me. Oh me. That's why you see you must come with your Bibles or your iPhones or your, your, your phones. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, it says they must not speak evil of anyone and they must avoid quarreling instead. They should be gentle and show true humility to everyone. Let's start from, um, let's start from verse 1 so we understand what, where this is going to. Now, remind your people to Titus. Are you in Titus? Is this Titus? This one looks like, okay, 3, 1, okay. Let's start chapter 2. Let's go chapter 2, not, not chapter 1, chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Chapter 2, let's start from 1. This is Titus chapter 3. Hallelujah. If somebody is dead, just read out for me quickly. Yes, from verse 1. Glory be to God. She needs a microphone, please. Can you go get her a microphone? I would like us to see that scripture. Amen. Verse 1. But as for you, yes. promote the kind of living mm -hmm. that reflects right teaching. Mm -hmm. Two, teach the older men to execute self-control, mm -hmm. to be worthy of respect, mm -hmm. and to live wisely. Mm -hmm. They must have strong faith and be filled with love and patience. All right. Verse 3. Similarly, teach the older women yeah. to live in a way that is appropriate mm -hmm. for someone serving the Lord. Yeah. They, okay. must, they must not go around speaking evil of others mm -hmm. and must not be heavy drinkers. Uh -huh. Instead, they should teach others what is, what good. is good. Continue. These Four. older women... Mm -hmm. Must train the younger women. These older women must train the younger women mm -hmm. to, to love, love their, their husbands, husbands. Uh -huh. and, and their, their children, children. Uh -huh. to live wisely mm -hmm. and be pure, mm -hmm. to take care of their homes, mm -hmm. to do good, and to be submissive to their husbands. Mm -hmm. Then they will not bring shame on the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So you, if you can see there, there was an admonition that Paul was giving, you know, to Titus to the younger women. Of certain things they must do. And those things that are called to do is in the place of being a nurturer. You see, you must, you, you should imbibe that kind of spirit in you right now. Even around your siblings, around people, are, you know, in your life. By nurturing them. Because let me tell you something. What you do now shows what you do tomorrow. The habits you create today shows how far they grow with you. Even into your marriage. Hallelujah. But the things you don't do and you expect that it will fall on you like an anointing when you are married because sometimes people feel that something just comes upon you. It will never come. What you don't start to practice and make a habit to now will never come in marriage. People, listen to me please. Marriage has become the eye opener for a lot of people. And a lot of people are trying to opt out of it because they realize the mistakes they've made. But they can't come out because they're like, kind of, I need to be here for the, for the sake of a lot of people. So it's very important that where we are as singles is a very important place. Because you know what? Why is this so important? Your concerns are for the things of the Lord. Your concerns are for Him and Him alone. Hallelujah. Letter U. The U in the north says, unequally yoked. 
you need to be unequally yoked. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6, 14, the ESV version says, do not be unequally yoked with what? Unbelievers. For what partnership has what? Righteousness with what? Lawlessness. Or what fellowship has what? Light with what? But a whole lot of times, I've come to realize that a lot of young people, a very baby, a lot of singles, can't wait any longer, Pastor Debbie. They can't wait, Pastor Bala. They're too tired of where they are. So they want to opt out and dash into marriage quickly. And because no one seems to be coming in, in, in court, who, who comes? They find some other people that are around, and then you see people marrying Muslims. Uh, I, I, he's a nice guy. Nice is not the fruit of the Spirit. He's not. He's nice. No, he's not. Because that nice guy today can become a gremlin tomorrow. I heard a story about a man, of a woman rather. This guy actually came to church. You must be very careful who is around you. Because a lot of people can come to church trying to feel as if they are what they are not. Because people can actually speak the language of the Christianese now. And they can actually act the part now. And are not. And this guy married this girl. I mean, played the part very well. And this girl had no idea because she didn't do her own homework. And then when they got married, what happened was that the next time, the, guy, the, the next thing that happened is the guy actually came out and brought out a mat and put it on the floor. He said, this is our new worship. We are Muslims now. So we must be very careful. Be unequally yoked. And this happens more with the, the, the single female because they are, they are in a hurry. Please don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry to opt out of your singlehood. Singleness is not a disease. It's not a disease. It's a gift. Where you are right now is a gift. Use it well. Utilize this time you have well. You can travel to certain places. You can do so many things now. And you are still single. Don't be in a hurry to just jump into marriage. Don't get too moved by when you see who are marrying. Not all that glitters is gold. Some people look nice, but things are happening. Celebrate where you are now. Celebrate yourself now. Because I've realized a lot of times, people, because of the rush for love, and this really happened because so many people have been deprived of this love thing from their homes. And because of that, the next individual person that comes and begins to shower them good nothings in words, they jump to that person. And today there are issues going on but they can't speak they are silent about it why because what would they say to others unequally yoked do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers can you see that diagram there of two there's one cow and one head they call that a particular kind of horse do not be unequally yoked this is the time for you to actually become free, be single. Some people are not even single again. Too many of their lives has been taken from them. They have, they have slept with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and you're no longer whole anymore. Because when you sleep with someone, what happens to you is this. A part of you goes away. And so imagine if you have slept with five or six guys, what happens to you? Six people have a part of you somewhere. And you are no longer yourself. And a whole lot is happening in your life. And it's true because they have taken a part of you away. That's why you will be whole again. And that's what David prayed. Lord, make me whole again. Do not be equally yours. Hallelujah. Letter T. I call that true beauty. Teachable. In 1 Timothy 2, 9 to 10, he says, I also want the women to dress modestly, with decency and propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, to, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. So in other words, at this stage that we are in, you must be teachable. Teachability is an ability for you to be humble, to receive, to be taught. In the single stage, you are teachable. A lot of times for the women folk, we get so clogged by so many things to wear and you can be wearing 
we have so many well-dressed mumus. Excuse my my French in my English. But sincerely, we have a lot of well-dressed buffoons. Forgive me if I actually said something that actually we didn't like. But that's the honest truth. They're well-dressed, but they are no good deeds. They look nice on the outside, but the inside is horrible. That's why, you see, there was a guy that a friend of mine told me about. He was so much in love. He, he saw this girl from afar, and he happens in church. He saw this girl from afar. She was so lovely, the way she dresses, the way she worships. Man, the guy was like, ah, this is the girl I want to marry. Until one day, he met her in the toilet side area, and she was raining courses on one guy. And the guy said, what? I can't marry this one. Wow. Are you teachable? Can you receive instructions as a, as, as a single? And it's very important because the generation that is coming up now, they are very feisty, very arrogant. Are you teachable? That's true beauty. Beauty is not about what we see. True beauty is within. Hallelujah. Then we have the S for the ladies, for the knots. Spirit filled. Ephesians 5 18. Said, so do not be drunk in wine, which is dissipation, but be filled by the Spirit. Speaking to yourself in sounds. In other words, so you need to be spirit filled. How does it mean to be spirit filled? Being spirit doesn't mean you are walking like a monk or you are walking like a nun. No, no, no. Let me tell you what, let me tell you the highest form of maturity. The highest form of maturity is when, when you are, when you are matured, you are, you are approachable. I see a lot of ladies not approachable. Nobody can approach you. Before you, before, before anybody else come, the eye will give them first. And you are spirit filled, you are not spirit filled. Something else is filling you, not, not spirit. It might be another spirit. Maybe it's another spirit. <laughs> a lot of ladies are not approachable at all. You want to come to their face is strong. And the Bible says only a wicked man had met his face. Are you a wicked man? You, a guy approaches you and says, Hi, sir, can I get you? No, no, no. What is it? Ah, yeah. They're not approachable. And the Bible says if any man must have friends, must I show you? Say what? Friend, if you are not friendly, you can't have friends. And they don't want to marry. You can't, you can't make friends. Nobody can approach you. Nobody can talk to you. They talk to you. You see, even if a guy comes to approach you to toast you, say, is it a problem? Are you, can't you be toasted? Is it good to be? That means you are still in the market. You are still marketable. Are, are you angry? Yeah, 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 no, 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 come that guy. No, I can't. Even if he's not as fine as you think, or he's not, he's not Denzel Washington, or looks like anything, but actually be, 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 be approachable, be hospitable. The person comes to you, be nice to the guy. You might not, you might not be the man. The guy might find somebody else that will marry you. That's the mistake a lot of young single ladies make. You don't know where the miracle is coming from. You think it's that first one? No, it's not that one. Somebody else. I know people that that happens to. Um, Bishop Trem, Bishop Bukumpo. He was someone that introduced his wife to him. He didn't go and meet her. Someone introduced her to him. So you can imagine somebody that has seen his wife, loved her personality, and said, You are, you are fit for a bishop. Let me introduce you to a bishop. You are fit for a king. But someone has to see your personality first. The highest form of spirituality is when you are approachable. There's no air around you. There's no air. Let's drop all this, try to form, do a lot of things. Let's be approachable, be nice. I know if I have a friend that, man, <laughs> married men, chase, they chase like they will toast like she doesn't show them away. Though. She will talk to them nicely and start to give them ah, daddy me. You know those daddy me? 
Though that in me is already telling the man, respect yourself. It's a nice way of making man say, ah, my father. Oh. The men end up becoming like a father to her and they support her in many things she's doing without even sleeping with her one night. She puts up, it's, we need to know how to put people in, off, in places. Ladies, because we see so much. Spiritual high praise, also like we have you. A lot of people worship with God, they praise and worship God in church. Oh, but men, what comes out of their mouth? Ah, weapons of mass destruction. God help us. God help us. Amen. That's all for the ladies. I'm, I'm, I'm done with that. I'm going to go to the men and the boats. The boat aspect now. The boats. Amen. A boat is a type of mechanical fastener that consists of a shaft with threads and it's used to hold two or more parts together. A boat is a form of threaded fastener with an external male thread requiring a matching preformed female thread such as a knot. That's what we all know. Amen. Just to let you understand what the boat is. Now let me, let me go to the men, the B part. Because the men is a boat. Now what's the B part for the men? Believe in yourself. Believe, men, believe in yourself. Come on, believe in yourself. The girl has given you nine inches nail. Come on, believe in yourself. She gave you the show. Believe in yourself. Don't be, don't go, don't, don't say, I'm nothing. No, 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 you are something. You're not the first person I can get a nine javelin. Don't worry. Many have gotten it. We've gotten it in time past and we're still standing. You will stand too. Believe in yourself, man. You might not have all the money in the, in the, in the world. Believe in yourself. But you see, this is one thing you must understand, man. This is one thing you must understand, guys. You see, a lot of times we, 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 we get our belief system from the wrong place. And that's the problem. God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. A long time ago, I never used to like, but I was short. You see me, I'm brief. I'm about five feet something, you know. I hated the fact that I was short. And I, I said this several times. I never used to like it. I used to hate the fact that I was short. I, I didn't like myself. I wanted to be tall like this guy with the dress. I wanted to be tall like him. Sorry, I don't want to embarrass you. Can you please stand up? Come on now. Can you see that? Kind of, I, 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 if I stand close to him now, you see that I, I, I'll be like his shoulder. I wanted to be as tall. Chuk, 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 I mean, chuk, chuk, right? Jephthah, please sit down. Thank you. Please just give for Jephthah. Lovely. I love your braids. Nice, 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 nice thing. A lot of people are like, ah, this guy is he braids. Ah, this guy is he cannot calm down. Ah, we are too judgmental in church. <laughs> church has moved though. No longer like before that. Right? Sometimes they'll, they'll be wearing braids now. You know, and it's, it's challenging because now you want to take this kind of guy to mama. Mama first thing that is this guy really. <laughs> but he is. Praise the Lord. But before you introduce it to mama, first give the good size of him first in the house. So that when mama sees mama say, okay. <laughs> My son. <laughs> Hallelujah. So a lot of times we try to get our we get our belief, belief system from About this being tall, I prayed. Oh, I said, Father, make me tall. And the reason for me growing tall was horrible. What was it? Guess what? Guess what it was? You will know. Every guy we know. What was it? Girls. These girls, eh, guys. These girls. They, they put us in so many wahala. It's because of girls we plan do yahoo yahoo. It's because of girls want to get all the money. What? It's all to impress the who? The girls. Even the bars. Everything is to impress who? You girls, that every guy say you girls, eh? You girls, you have cost wahala for us <laughs> in this church, in this in this world. <laughs> Praise God! I will pray to grow tall. Pray to it. When I went to meet a sister, a sister that was in prayer gym, she said, "Sister, you need to agree with me over this thing. Agree with me. I want to grow tall, you know." And she foolishly agreed with me. I don't know. I don't know how somebody can agree with you to grow tall when you are. She, she really agreed with me because she believed that with God all things are possible. See how we can misquote scriptures? With God all things are possible. And she agreed. And the next day I was wishing. You know, I had one, I had, there's a way I normally size certain things. I put a mark. How many guys did that when you were growing up? You put a mark somewhere. I know we are all here. Just put a mark. Ah, if I grow to an this. So the next day I noticed that I'm not rich there yet now. So I said, somebody told me, drink Kunu. 
So I just I started drinking Kuno. I will drink, I will buy Kuno. I will buy Kuno like bottles to be drinking. Ah, someone had told me again, take raw egg. So we take our barrel raw egg, crack it, open it, drink it like that, brah. That's why I have a good voice now, you know. The raw egg helps me. You know? <laughs> I will drink the raw egg, drink the raw egg. Nothing, I will not talk. Someone has said, oh, yeah, I can't play basketball. So if you play basketball, you will stretch. So I, I never like basketball. I started watching basketball to love, fall in love with it so I can start playing it. I didn't grow tall. I said, God, what is going on? I need to grow. Someone now said, eat beans. Oh, I didn't only eat beans. I drank beans. <laughs> you know, in school, then they normally, when they say, you know, we don't eat beans in school. I went to command, you know, secondary school, Ibadan. So we didn't used to eat beans. We used to drink beans. And beans with <laughs> Rute. Rute. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that went on. Somebody said, okay, maybe you should start taking drugs. Ah, that one I said, I better, I better. this 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 top business is getting too much. I can't go that far. Until I stumbled on that scripture. That God says, You are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Man, I don't care how you look, you are fine for your future. Yes, you are fit for your purpose. Yes, if you are short, the Bible says, Lo and beyond, I will be all with you. God is with you. So you are fit for where you are going. So let nothing by any chance disturb you. Believe in yourself. Because no other person can believe in you like you. No other person. You are the only one that can believe in you. Praise God. The whole part. Be an optimist. Be an optimist. Hallelujah. An optimist is a person who engages in positive thinking on looking on the bright side of things. Optimism is the outlook that good things will happen even if the situation may not appear totally positive at the moment. So in other words, an optimist is someone that removes the I am from the possible, from the impossible and says it can be possible. It can be possible. You must be an optimist. You must be an optimist. Stop being a negative thinker. You've thought negatively for too long. That's why you're not moving so far. Where your mind goes, your life goes. Where your mind goes, your life goes there. So stop thinking negative all the time about yourself. Praise God. The letter T, treat others kindly, yeah, guys. Treat others kindly. See, but let me tell you the truth. Women, you must understand this. The way that guy is treating people around him shows how he will treat you. That's one of the ways you can understand. Those are the, the, the cues you can get to know if this person will treat you well. Check how he treats everyone around him. His siblings, his friends, his neighbors. Check how they treat people around you. And guys, that's the thing. Treat people around you with kindness. And one of the fruit of the spirit is what? Kindness. Love is kind. Kindness. Letter S is sober-minded. And I'll read this in Titus 2, 6. It says, similar, similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled. One. You know what? So you must be self-controlled. Be self-controlled. Tell, tell, men, tell the other man, be self-controlled. Control yourself. The Amplified Classic says, in a similar way, all the young men to be self-restrained and to behave prudently, taking life seriously. The TPT says, says, likewise, guide the younger men into living disciplined lives for Christ. So men, you must be sober-minded. That word is being self-control. Control your urges. Control yourself. It's not everywhere you just go to and just do anything. A man of purpose is a man that has control. And let me let you know something. People actually do have control. You know, people really do have control. When a man says, I can't do that, I can't help myself. I have to just sleep with you, I can't help myself. Just tell him, I have aid. He will, control will be there. Control will come immediately to hold himself. So there's already control somewhere. He just has to exercise it, Abby. Praise the Lord. And the last one is the one my wife dropped, which is a washer. 
Now all these things about your life can be cemented together once you involve the Holy Ghost and you bring the word in there. The Bible says that we are washed by the water of the word of God. So you must give yourself to the word in your life consistently for your life to make a meaning. Tell your neighbor your life will bring meaning to many in Jesus name. Amen.